What is up guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 video. So once again, we're taking another look at the Mastercore exploit uh, by Macaulay. So of course, this is the save game exploit that allows us to load PS2 ISOs on the PS4 and PS5 up to the latest firmware. Now there's been a new release of this and it adds a couple of features here. This isn't a big update, it's a pretty small update. However, what I thought I would also do in this video is go over how to fix a few issues uh, that you might be having with this exploit. I've seen quite a lot of people on Twitter uh, having a few issues, so I wanted to go ahead and just cover how you can fix or get around some of these problems in this video. Now, in this newer version of the exploit, we have a couple of changes. The first one here is that this release adds support for sending ELF files over a TCP socket with no additional metadata header. Therefore, you can send the files directly using a TCP transfer tool like Netcat, for example. So you can use Netcat, you can use Netcat GUI, payload injectors for the PS4 will work. You can also, you know, send it using SoCat or something like that. So any of these kind of network tools that you can use to send files over sockets, you can use that now to send the ELF files. However, I haven't had much success trying to use those tools to send the actual PS2 ISOs over. Instead, I just get the game crashing whenever I try to send a PS2 ISO over using those kind of tools, um, but you can send the ELF files using these tools. So that's one handy thing. And another addition, of course, is that this update allows you to send multiple ELF files without needing to restart the game. So in previous versions, you know, you would run one ELF file, like the notification ELF file, and then you couldn't load anything else after that. You would have to close the game, reopen it, reload the save file, and then you could send the another ELF file after that. Whereas now you can send one ELF file and once it's finished executing, the ELF loader will continue running so that you can then send another ELF file and you can send as many as you want one after the other, apart from the game loader, the actual PS2 game loader, because uh, once you've sent that ELF file, it runs indefinitely and therefore, you know, you can't run an additional ELF file after that. So that's one, you know, quality of life improvement that's been added there. That's quite convenient. So those are the main updates, just those two things right there. And in terms of future updates to the exploit, we can see that Macaulay is working on a USB game loader to allow us to load the PS2 ISOs from a USB drive that's plugged into the console instead of having to send them over the network. This should allow for faster transfer of the games to get them loaded, which is the biggest limiting factor right now of the exploit is how long it takes to send some of these ISOs over, especially, you know, emulators that have huge game packs installed on them. Uh, that can take a really long time to send over or big ps2 games that are like three to three to four gigabytes in size they can take a really long time you know sometimes like 15 20 minutes to send the file across even on a wired connection so this is definitely a welcome change and there's a little teaser here that he has released so if we go ahead and play it you can see he loads the exploit which then runs the elf loader he then sends this new elf payload over and we can see it says here that it is the PS2 game loader via USB. And then it asks him which ISO he wants to launch from his USB drive. So you can just have a bunch of PS2 ISOs on your USB and it will just cycle through each one asking you which one you want to load. And you just select the one that you actually want to load. Pretty simple. So he selects Burnout 3, which I think is about a, over a gigabyte uh, ISO for the PS2 here. And provided this hasn't been sped up in editing, you can see how quickly that that loads right there. Now it may have been sped up actually, it looks kind of like it was sped up in editing, but I didn't see the little light bar going across the screen really quickly, so I'm not sure, but hopefully it loads significantly faster than sending it over uh, the network connection. So as you can see here, it finally sends over and then loads up on his PS4, I believe it is. So that's how that works. Now we knew that this was possible because it was originally mentioned in CTURT's uh, blog post on the Mastercore exploit that was released back in September, uh, where obviously he went with the method of just sending it over the network, just like Macaulay. Apparently that's the easier way to do it. However, as you can see here, he does say that you could probably also copy games off a USB storage device by manually porting over a USB and FAT implementation since mount syscalls are restricted. So yeah, it was definitely possible from the beginning, but it looks like it takes a little bit more effort to get it working over a USB drive. And that's what Macaulay seems to be implementing here uh, in this video. So we'll keep an eye out for when this releases. And obviously I'll give you guys another video once this is available. 
but it does come at a pretty good time because there does seem to be some issues with the actual file loader itself uh, for some people. For example, I downloaded the latest version here and as you can see, when I double click it, it just does not open. Now the older version works. I can open the older version no problem and send the file. However, the newer version doesn't seem to be working correctly and the older version does get detected in a lot of antivirus software. So I'm going to show you some other ways that you can send the files uh, without having to use these you know, file loader applications. If you're having any issues with them, then there are some other ways, you know, obviously using some of the methods that we can now use uh, with this newer version. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right here. So first of all, if we go ahead and load up Okaji Shadow King, we'll press start, we'll restore the game to load our modded save file. Okay, there we go, waiting for PS2 elf payload. So if we head back to the desktop here, like I say, there's a few different ways that you can do this instead of using these applications. Obviously, there is the actual script itself, the file loader script. So Mastercore file loader, you could use this or you can just use Netcat, SoCat, Netcat GUI, something like that instead. So for example, we can send files using Netcat GUI. So with this, you just enter the IP address of your PS4 or PS5, enter the port number as 9025, and then you just drag in whatever you want to send. So we'll do the PS notification. We'll drag that in and then we'll hit inject payload. And as you can see, it says done. We switch over to the PS5. You can see it has successfully loaded that elf file. And once it's done, you can see it's still saying waiting for PS2 elf payload. So I can send another payload, another elf file after sending that one. So if we head back here to the desktop, I can then do the light bar one, drag that in. PS uh, light bar, inject payload. And I don't believe, yeah, there's no notification for that one, but it has actually changed the LED on my controller to be a yellow LED. So that works as well. And I guess I could maybe do the notification one again, just to prove, there you go, that that is indeed working. So you can send multiple ELF files back to back. So that's pretty handy. And then obviously you can use other things as well. There's SoCat for Windows. You could use this or SoCat on Linux as another one that you can use. So with the Windows version, you just make sure the ELF file is in the same location as the SoCat.exe. I'll leave it down in the video description. You just open up a command prompt window uh, in this location right here. And then the command that you want to send is SoCat-T and then one, which I believe is the timeout, and then file, colon, then the name of the ELF file that you're going to be loading, and then TCP, colon, and then the IP address, colon, the port number of the PS4 or PS5. So if we hit enter, you can see it sends it right there, and it now says waiting for a game file because that was the PS2 ISO loader that we just loaded right there. So for sending the ISO, again, if you're having trouble being able to use these tools, you can instead use the send file script uh, it would be good if you could also use Netcat or SoCat to send it. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I'm just not able to send any of the PS2 ISOs over Netcat or SoCat without it crashing the game. So instead, I have to use the actual script that you can download here on the repo. So basically, you download the script, just throw it in a folder. And of course, make sure you run the command prompt in that folder by typing in CMD space before the file path in the URL bar and press enter so that you can open it right there. And then you just enter the actual command itself to run the script. Uh, before that, make sure you type in pip install uh, progress and press enter and let that install because that's a dependency that the script needs. So once that's installed, you can then enter Python and then the name of the script and then dash I for IP address and then the IP address of your PS4 or PS5. So we'll just type it in right here and then dash F for file and then the location of the ISO file that you want to send. So in my case, if I hold down the shift key and right click on the ISO that I want to send, I can select the option to copy as path and then I can just right click to paste that full file path in right there and that should hopefully work. So we hit enter and there you go, uploading and it does indeed work. It's now running the emulator on our PS5. If you are having any issues using these applications, these EXEs, you can use these Python scripts instead. You can use SoCat, you can use Netcat, you can use Netcat GUI to send the ELF files as well. So you have options, quite a few options there for being able to send these files across. 
So one of the main issues that I've been coming across quite a lot is people trying to resign the save file on older firmware versions. So if you're on 5.05 or 6.72, you know, one of those kinds of firmwares, then you're probably going to have trouble resigning the save because a lot of the pre-made saves have been made on 9.00 and the keys for resigning the saves um, are different on newer firmwares than they are on older firmwares. And unfortunately, 5.05 and 6.72 are just too old. And therefore, you know, if you try to do anything with those saves, mount the saves in the Apollo save tool, um, or if it's, a, if it's a save that you've created on your PS5 or PS4 that's in the latest firmware and you try and, you know, import it in Apollo, then you're going to run into an issue where it says it's failed to mount the save file because it's on an older firmware. So if you're running into that issue, there is a workaround for this. All you need to do is download a fake package copy, a fake package version of the game, of the Okaji Shadow King game, Make sure it's for the same region as your retail copy and download that and install it on your jailbroken PS4 and then create the save file on the fake package version of the game. Once you've got that save file created, you can then use the Apollo save tool to access that save file. You can then export the decrypted save data from the save which and select your vmc0.card file. That'll extract that to the data folder in the Apollo folder and then your profile folder and that it should be in there. Then you just want to go to that location in FTP and then once you're there you can then delete that vmc0.card file, take the modded one from the github repo right here for whichever firmware version you're trying to run the exploit on, download it right here and then once you've got that you can then copy it to that location with FTP, rename it to vmc0.card, then go back on Apollo and then just import that decrypted save data, so import decrypted save data and it will import that modded save back into your save file. And then you can re-sign the save file from there. Obviously, make sure you've already activated your profile with the same account ID as the account that you're using on your retail uh, PS4 or PS5 that you're going to be running the exploit on. And then it will re-sign it right there. And once that's done, you can then copy it to the USB drive and then copy it from the USB to your PS4 or PS5 that's on the latest firmware. And you'll be able to run the modded save file that way. So that's the workaround if you're on an older jailbreak. Uh, obviously a bit more involved, but you get the same result. You can get the modded save file working and resigned using that older jailbreak. So, so that's how you fix that issue. So those are the updates that have been made in this latest version, as well as a few tips on how to fix some of the issues that I've been seeing going around uh, with people trying to successfully load this exploit and having a few problems. So hopefully that answers most of the questions anyway. Uh, for now so hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful if you did please leave a like and subscribe and i'll hopefully see you guys in the next one